Hi, I'm Dr. Pompa. You know, I've spoken to you a lot about cellular inflammation as being a major cause of most chronic illness today. But today I want to give you a broader perspective of how perhaps you got here, meaning why you don't feel well, whether it's brain fog, fatigue, unexplainable illnesses, diabetes, hypothyroid, or autoimmune. And I want to give you an analogy I think you can relate to of really how these conditions are starting and becoming epidemic, but also how we have a unique solution and how I teach this unique solution around the country because it really is the answer to the problem. And I think this is an analogy that you can understand. Well, here I am next to a three-legged stool, right? It's an analogy that you understand. If one of the legs are missing, what happens to the stool? It falls over. Well, so does our solution to the problem. It will not hold up without one of these legs. So when I go through this, yes, this is actually talking about how these problems actually start, the cause. So yes, all three of these legs are part of the cause. But to me, it really gives you an analogy of the actual solution, which is a very unique solution that I know this. It is rooted in brand new scientific literature. Matter of fact, when we look at the first leg, DNA, you know, right now, there is exciting things coming out almost every day about epigenetics. What that means is how certain genes or DNA get turned on. See, the old dogma was that you, hey, if your mom or dad had heart disease or diabetes or a condition, you're gonna end up there too. Well, you know what, today we know that that's not true. Your DNA is not your destiny. Matter of fact, we know that these genes actually need to be turned on. So they're just genes of susceptibility. I have heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes that run in my family. As a matter of fact, in ninth grade, they weren't going to let me try out for the wrestling team because I had high blood pressure. Obviously, my gene was triggered because my mom always had high blood pressure. Today, here I am, almost 50, and yet I don't have high blood pressure. I'm not on any medication, thank God. Um, you know, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is I've turned off that gene. See, that's the new exciting thing is that yes, we've learned that these genes can be turned on. However, we also know that they can be turned off. You know, a great study just came out of Duke University and the study showed that we, we've taken two groups of identical twin mice, meaning that they share the same DNA. We fed them the exact same diet, we exercise them the same. I say we, but it was actually them. But if we would repeat this, we would find the same result. Well, the one group, they actually exposed to a toxin called BPA. You're probably familiar with the toxin from plastic. However, cosmetics, personal care products, is actually the number one exposure. So be careful what you put on your body and what you put in your body. But the BPA, when they exposed this group of mice to the, uh, the chemical, it turned on a gene that expressed obesity. So yes, they became fat. There was other health conditions associated with that agouti gene being turned on as well. But I think this is the best part of the study, is that um, the, their uh, offspring was, were actually born doomed for failure, doomed with their agouti gene turned on to become obese as little teenage mice. Despite what they ate, despite how much they exercised, they became obese. Might sound familiar to some of you. So, but what the best part of the study was, I promise you there's a good side to this, is when they took these mice and they gave them certain things that we use, they turned off the agouti gene and they became thin again. So that's the good news, is that some of you absolutely have certain symptoms, brain fog, fatigue, thyroid conditions, diabetes, because certain genes were turned off. So yes, that's the cause. However, part of the solution must be to change that gene expression. And the good news is, is that can be done. So that's one leg of the stool. That has to be part of your solution. Well, that brings me to this, because there's certain stressors, and I use BPA in that case, in the mice uh, as an example, that actually turn on the gene. And if these stressors are not removed, you're never gonna change the gene expression. Well, I describe these stressors typically as the perfect storm. You remember the movie? We had three major weather fronts come together and it caused a catastrophic storm. Well, in this case, we have three major stressors in our lives that come together and cause a catastrophic disease or how you got here, perhaps. Well, look, you know, it's typically either one chemical and an emotional stress and a physical stress, two chemicals 
that have bioaccumulated over a lifetime, like heavy metals from amalgam fillings, moldy home, Lyme disease, these stressors, add another chemical stressor, and then add one emotional stressor, like you know, a spouse or someone dies that you love, or there's something that occurs, and it sends you over the edge. What happens then is, all of a sudden it triggers certain DNA and you start expressing symptoms of fatigue, brain fog or other digestive problems, food allergies, whatever it is. But see, part of the solution has to be to figure out what these stressors are and remove them. One of the things when I teach doctors around the country, I teach them this. If you have somebody that you're helping and you have, they have a certain condition that they're doing everything right, and they've done it long enough and they're still not getting well or completely well, it's probably, doctor, because you haven't figured out there's another stressor that you're missing upstream. The perfect storm, something is still going on that's keeping that DNA turned on. So again, part of the solution, turn off the genes. We know how to do that today, and we do that. The second part is remove the stressors that turned it on. In the third leg, and maybe the most exciting, and newest in the scientific literature, and it's new and it is exciting, is that certain gut bacteria we need to regulate how we think, certain neurotransmitters that can affect depression and how we feel, our immune system, which I'm going to talk about, and even our hormones. Yes, there's certain hormones that actually affect your appetite and even how you burn fat for energy that need information from the bacteria in your gut. And if it doesn't have these certain bacteria, then hormonally, you won't be able to lose weight. Pretty interesting. But look, we know this. The, the gut bacteria in your stomach, in your intestines, outnumber the cells in your body 10 to 1. And what we've learned is that your cells cannot function normally without certain bacteria. They can't produce certain hormones. You can't think clearly without certain bacteria. Your immune system doesn't work properly without certain gut bacteria. And when we replace these bacteria, all of a sudden, now we start hormonally feeling normal again and functioning normal again. Matter of fact, great new study out of Washington State University showed that people who were not able to lose weight, when they put unique bacteria in these people, back in their gut, they all of a sudden were starting to lose weight again. Depression, I mean, we can go down these new studies with one symptom and condition after another, realizing that gut bacteria plays a major role in why we're seeing so many bizarre and unexplainable illnesses today. Perhaps it's the overuse of antibiotics. Perhaps it's C-sections where they're not getting certain bacteria even from the beginning of life. And yes, to certain toxins can kill off certain bacteria. Perhaps it's we don't ferment foods anymore. Uh, we're exposed to bacteria that we're used to. Whatever the reason, we have an epidemic of gut problems, food allergies, allergies, hyperimmunity, autoimmune conditions, because we're missing certain bacteria in our gut. It's part of the solution. It's one of the legs of the stool that if not there, the solution will topple over and not exist. So we know we have to replace these bacteria. I wanna give you a good example. There's a bacteria that you can't get in a pill or a powder. So don't run out and buy the next probiotic. But this bacteria actually tells our cells to produce a cell called a T regulatory cell. These cells tell your immune system to calm down and shut off. Sound familiar? Allergies, food allergies, autoimmune conditions, Crohn's, celiac, you know, more and more conditions are being labeled as autoimmune. It is the biggest growing epidemic on the planet we don't have enough specific tests to identify it, but we know it's, uh, it's occurring. We're literally, your body is attacking itself. We label these autoimmune conditions based on the tissue attacking. If it's attacking the skin, we call it lupus. If it's attacking the joints, we call it rheumatoid. If it's attacking the gut, we can call it Crohn's or celiac. But here's the point. When you're missing certain bacteria, you don't make enough of these cells to tell your immune system to slow down, back off. And now, all of a sudden, you're in a state of inflammation driven by your own immune system. This is an epidemic. Part of the solution has to be to replace these bacteria. I don't care if you can't lose weight, if you're depressed, not thinking clear, brain fogged, or have an autoimmune condition. This is a part of the solution. This is the cause, this is the solution. It's a three-legged stool. All three legs have to be there for the solution to hold up. So again, we want to change gene expression. We want to remove the stressors. You need the right test even to determine what those stressors are because bio, uh, there's certain toxins that bioaccumulate over years. 
heavy metals being one of them, biotoxins, lime, living in moldy homes. Yes, they stay in your system and they start turning on these bad genes. That has to be dealt with correctly. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how we're seeing so many of these unexplainable illnesses in the epidemic of autoimmune, but the three-legged stool gives us a new answer to all of these problems. It definitely gives us a new understanding. So I hope this helps.